This is lesson one and chapter nine. We're going to look at arithmetic sequences today. A sequence is just an ordered set of numbers. And when you see that ordered set of numbers with the three dots, those three dots are called the ellipsis, which means that the sequence continues. It's called an infinite sequence. Some sequences have a rule that describes the nth term. This pattern of odd numbers, that sequence has the nth term 2n plus 1. If we let n equal 1, then we'll get the number 3. If we let n equal 2, we'll get the number 5, and so on and so forth. So in an infinite sequence, you can substitute to find any nth term. That's the nth term. Like the number 7 is a sub 3. That's the third term or the nth term. Sometimes you see a sub k instead of a sub n. So those are all appropriate symbols for talking about sequences. When we have a finite sequence, that just means the list stops and there's a certain number of terms. So let's go look at some formulas here. We may have a recursive rule or we may have an explicit rule. The explicit rule makes a reference to the first term, but a recursive rule makes a reference to the term previous to the one that you have. So if you started at six, the recursive rule is the, this is the first term where n is one. If we wanted to find the second term, we would have to know the first term which was, this was our six, and then subtract four. So to find the second term, it would be six minus four. So our second term would be two in that recursive formula. So this sequence would start off six and then two and so on and so forth. That's called a recursive rule. So in example one, we wanna take advantage of that. We wanna find the 12th term given the explicit rule a sub n is 12 n plus 3, and our n is 12. We got that from the subscript. So the 12th term is 144 plus 3. Our 12th term, which is our nth term, is 147. We didn't have to find all of the terms from 1 up to 12. We could go straight for the 12th term. If you have a sequence given by a sub n is four plus the quantity n minus one times five, if we wanna find the first three terms, we would start off a sub one is four plus one minus one, so that's zero. That means our a sub one term is just four. a sub two is four plus two minus one, so that's one times five and five plus four makes the second term nine. Then the third term is four plus three minus one, so that is two times five, which is 10, and 10 plus four makes our third term 14. So that sequence is four, nine, 14. Those are the first three terms in the explicit formula. To find the 11th term, we'll just skip over 5 through 10 and go straight for the 11th term. That would be 4 plus 11 minus 1, which is 10. So 4 plus 10 times 5 is 54. So the 11th term is 54. That's pretty straightforward. This should have been a four right there, not a 14, so a sub four. Many times we'll want to find a general rule or a pattern. In example three, we have three of those cases. So this first one, six, 16, 26, 36, you can see the difference between each of the terms, the difference I'll call D, the difference is 10. So if we wanna write a general rule, we can say that the a sub n term would be, we want to start off with 6, and then if 
this is the first term, we want to say n minus 1, so we don't want to have a multiple of 10. That term would be 0 here, and then multiply by 10. So simplifying that, we've got 6 plus 10n minus 10. So our a sub n term, or the rule that we would follow to generate that sequence, a sub n, would be 10 times our nth term minus 4. So it's a linear sequence of terms. In the next, in part B, it looks like the difference is a quarter. So we've got one-fourth for our difference between terms. And if we're looking for that rule, we're going to start with the 1. So our a sub n term would start with the 1. And then we want to kill off the n minus 1 to make that a 0 times one-fourth. So simplifying that, a sub n, we've got 1 plus 1 fourth of our nth term minus 1 fourth. And 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths. So our nth term or explicit rule would be 0.25n plus 3 fourths to follow that pattern and create that sequence. Finally, in the last one, the difference here between negative 1 and negative 4, negative 4 and negative 7, looks like we're subtracting 3. So following that procedure to get the nth term, we're going to start with negative 1, and then we're going to say n minus 1 to get rid of that. So we only have negative 1, and then times negative 3. Simplifying that gives us an a sub n term of negative 1 minus 3n plus 3, and 3 minus 1 gives us our explicit formula of 2 minus 3n. So finding general terms and writing that nth term explicit rule is easy. Next, let's look at recursive definitions. They're a little more cumbersome because like we said before, we have to start with some initial condition. That's our a sub 1 term. And then we have to use the recursive formula where this term has to get rid of the first term or uses the first term in order to move on plus the difference. So in this pattern, 1, 4, 7, 10, that's like the example before, only positive we have a difference of 3, so we're adding 3. And our a sub 1 term, like this is asking for, our a sub 1 term is 1. So a recursive formula is written in two parts, the initial condition and then the recursive part. So to, to write this as a recursive rule, we're going to say our a sub 1 term is 1, and then our a sub n term is a sub n minus 1, so the term before, plus 3 more. So this is our recursive rule. In part b, the difference is subtracting 5, and our a sub 1 term is 4, and our nth term recursive formula is the term before minus 5. So this is the recursive formula. On this page, you can see that I've organized all of our formulas for us here, talking about arithmetic sequences, how they have the same differences between terms, or if you don't want to think about subtraction, the same sum. And each term in the sequence can be obtained recursively from its previous term by adding that difference. So you see the explicit formula here and the recursive formula here. Now this part, the C value, I didn't talk about that before, but we can see that this is similar to Y equals MX plus B. Do you see that in this case where A sub N is your Y and your difference is your slope and then your B value is your y-intercept. If you see that pattern, sometimes that helps you to figure out how to find that C value. It's the first term minus the difference. So it's more like looking for that zero term 
in the slope intercept formula. I'll model that for you here in example five. We also have the recursion formulas. I wrote them in one form here and where we're starting for greater than one. And I put the nth term and this was the second term. One plus one gave me two or the n minus one approach where you're subtracting to make this a zero term, the a sub one, and then make that the second term. So like I said, similar to slope intercept form, if you think about one, five, nine, 13, 17, is the sequence an arithmetic sequence? Well, we know that it is. Yes, it is arithmetic. And the reason it's ar arithmetic is because we're adding four or the difference between the terms is four. So like we looked back here where I said this is similar to slope intercept form, if I want to find that y intercept value to get the c number here, I take the first term and subtract the difference. So if we look at example five, to find that value, c using a sub one minus the difference, then c is one minus four. So our c value is negative three. And if you think about the graph when x is one, y is one, when x is two, y is five, when x is three, y is nine. When you think about that slope and you take four off going this way, then when x is zero, y is negative three. And you see that relationship that's similar to slope intercept form for an arithmetic sequence. And our pattern is the slope is four because the difference is four times our nth term and minus three. That will produce our sequence one, five, nine, 13, and 17. Example six wants us to find the 46th term. So we need to find some rule first of all. And that rule says a sub n is a sub one plus n minus one times the difference. And our difference here looks like we're adding three each time. So five minus two is three, eight minus five is three. And our first term is two. And we want the 46th term. So we're using this model with this information. So the 46th term would be the first term, which is two. And we're gonna say 46 is our n minus one. And our difference is three, so multiply by three. The 46th term is gonna be two plus 45 times three. And 45 times three is 135. And 135 plus two would give us the 46th term in the sequence of 137. Example seven wants us to find the missing terms or the missing numbers in the sequence. So if you look at the spaces here, you see that there's a space here and a space here and a space here. So I see that there are three spaces between 80 and 125. So I'm gonna make a note of that. We have three spaces between 80 and 125, which makes the difference between 80 and 125, the difference is 45. But since there's three spaces, 45 divided by three gives us 15 equally. So if we add 15, so 80 plus 15 would give us 95 for the second term, and plus 15 would give us 110 for the third term, and then finally plus 15 would give us 125 for the fourth term. So by finding the difference between the spaces, 15 apiece, we have replaced those missing numbers. Here's a practical application. The number of seats in the first row in an arena form an arithmetic sequence. If there are 20 row seats in row one and 23 seats in row two, 
how many seats are in row 16. So we have row one with 20 seats and row two with 23, and we wanna know how many seats in row 16. So it looks like the difference is three. And if we write a rule for that, then our rules should be a sub n is the first term plus n minus one times the difference. And we want the rule for the 16th row. So our rule would be 20 for the first row plus n minus one times three. So our general rule is 20 plus 3n minus 3, or 3n plus 17. So this is our general rule called our nth term rule, and we want how many seats in row 16, and that's 3 times 16, which is 48, and 48 plus 17 means in row 16, we have 65 seats that are gonna show up in row 16. So that was pretty easy. And then our final example, the arithmetic mean, when you, we wanna find the missing term of an arithmetic sequence, that sounds like the average to me. So the mean, the definition of mean is the average and we're just going to take the average. So 132 and 98 divided by 2 makes 115. So the average or the missing term would be 115 between 132 and 98. And that, my friends, is the end of lesson one.